you want to screw it, we'll screw it into it. Back here. Four, three. Today on Community Watch, we'll be talking about Hope's House, which is a new option for the area homeless. Should be a great show. Stay with us. The color in my garden keeps the pink of my cheeks. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have meals on wheels. They're my savior. My name is Lola Silvestri. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Welcome to Community Watch. Uh, I am solo this week because uh, Greg is somewhere in California. I have no idea what he does there, but he goes there quite frequently. A spring break and he, he gets to go to California. I'm not bitter about it though uh, because I have some great guests today that are going to make staying here just totally worthwhile. Um, you will get to meet them in a, in a minute, but we're going to talk about solutions for the area homeless. And I know that is an issue that's important to a lot of you out there. So we'll learn a lot more about that today. Don't go away. We'll be back with our guests right after this. Your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a Take Charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Welcome back to Community Watch. Very happy to have with us this week, Michelle Gerald and Jonathan Brown. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. It's glad, I'm glad to be here. Uh, now, Jonathan, you've been a guest on the show previously. I have. I have. But it's been a little while. Uh, yeah, a little while. It's been probably about eight years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, because I graduated from Georgia Highlands in 2011. So, yeah, it's been about eight years. Uh, yeah, memories. Um, <laughs> and at the time, you were uh, a leader in our Brother to Brother program. Yes, one of the founding members, yes. And um, mm. it uh, it has just done wonderfully. I've seen. And I'm very, I'm very proud of the of how it's grown because, like I said, when we first started, it was a select few. Now you says over 100 people, so yeah. that's very happy. So we have you to to thank for for helping us. I get was just started. following your direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. The great man that you are. <laughs> but you've been uh, you've been busy. I have since then. Yes, you I, have done a lot. Yes. Um, and it sounds like you're about to get even busier. Yes, yes, but, but, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's needed work, though. Yes. It's needed work. All right, so you are currently a, a behavioral coordinator, mm -hmm. is that right, mm -hmm. at Floyd? Yes. Um, and Ms. Gerald, you, until very recently, yes. worked at Highland Rivers. Yes. Going on six years. Mm -hmm. I left just shy of my sixth year. Now, I suspect that y'all are connected through that similar yes. work yes. interest. Yes. yes. I worked at Highland Rivers for about eight years. So we met at Highland Rivers, so yes. I was uh, working in um, Shelter Plus Care, which is a federal funded grant um, that housed individuals who were homeless. And so that's where I got kind of my first love, or first interest in working with the homeless was at Highland Rivers. And then for a while, he actually did full-time ministry yes. in my hometown. Yes. So that was... And your hometown. Dayton, Ohio. 
Yes. Yeah. Is that just a, a coincidence? A coincidence. It was a coincidence. It, it was a coincidence. Yeah. Yes. So we uh, knew we were meant to be friends. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. Well, um, I want to get into the particulars of Hope's house, but before we get to that, I'm curious, um, and, and I'm as you both have this this interest and concern. Uh, what is it about working with the homeless that seems to both of you a necessary thing uh, to push forward? For a lot of the homeless, it's a matter of having some type of support system to provide them some kind of hope, which is how we came up with the name Hope's House. And so imagine becoming homeless and you lose just about all of your worldly possessions, including a permanent address, your identification, your job. So people will come up to you and say, well, you're able-bodied, why don't you just go to work? I can't apply for a job if I don't have identification. I can't get identification if I don't have my birth certificate. So it's like a never-ending cycle where it's so hard for them to pull themselves out of that situation without the type of resources that we're getting ready to venture into. So I'm guessing y'all saw quite a few examples of yes. that. I mean, you have people who lost their job <clears throat> and just mm -hmm. could not get that, that next break. Right. And so they're, now they're living on the street because, hey, I've lost my job. I don't have any way to apply for um, assistance. And so now I'm just, I'm here. And no one wants to help me because I think they think I'm lazy. Um, I don't have any family because my family has given up on me because they say that you can go get a job like she said, right. but in reality I can't do that. So what do I do? And so a lot of them get arrested. Three meals. You, we all heard that three meals in a cot. Right. So they get arrested. So they have somewhere to sleep, or they fall onto drugs and stuff. And so now they're in this situation. So you're saying they get arrested intentionally? Some, some, yes. Some of them get arrested because it's it's a place for them to lay their head and they, and they get meals. And so we're trying to break that and say, hey, we're trying to give them another option. Right. Yeah. So, based on what you're telling me, I, I think most people have a preconceived notion yes. of of what the homeless are like. Yes. And you're suggesting that that's not no, correct. That's not. Because we, we've all done it, rolled down the street, seeing that person with the sign that says, we'll work for food or will you help me out? And we've judged them, well, won't they get a job? Or right. they, ain't nothing wrong with them. But you know, we, ha we do have some instances where individuals who are trying to better themselves, but they don't have the right tools to, to move forward in life. So. So often it's a case of someone just having bad luck. Right, yes, a lot of times it is. And then to add to that, once they get to the point where they do want to try to start getting up on their feet, we really need to educate the community about what sort resources are there out there in the community. Um, we have one right now that will help people get their birth certificate and their ID. So that's something that we're gonna offer with our program because again, you're lost, you can't really go anywhere and do anything without those two main things right there. Do you have any sense of how many homeless we have in this area. Yes, I'm glad you said that because <laughs> I did a little. Again, I, uh, I have a background in work with homeless. So mm -hmm. right now, there are, with the, this is the metro Atlanta area and Rome is included in that. There are 4,500 and I think 32 homeless people every night. They either sleep on the street or in shelters every night. What's that number again? 4,530 something. Okay. Yes. And and where did this come from? This came from a uh, the Atlanta Mission. Uh, they did a survey of oh. all the uh, the shelters, and then they kind of estimated per night. So it's like four thousand five hundred and thirty something. And that's in that's in the North Metro area. So from Rome into right outside of Marietta. Okay. Yes. That's a huge number. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. But we, we we don't we we don't realize that you know being the 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 t definition for homeless is where you don't have a permanent address. So sleeping on somebody's couch is considered to be homeless according to uh, DC Department of Community Affairs. You yeah. sleeping on the couch, um, shelters on the street, on a park bench. Those are definitions of being homeless. So, 
And you know, uh, it is not uncommon for me to come across a student mm -hmm. in that situation yes. uh, for various reasons. Mm -hmm. And I know from trying to, to work with those students, mm -hmm. very often they, they refuse, I guess, what would be considered traditional help. Mm -hmm. Uh, because to accept it would mean you're to really, define themselves. It, exactly, yes. yes. Uh, so is that something you're familiar with? It is. Yes. Because why, why it, that's like with anything else. Um, if I have, you know, been diagnosed with a, a disease or what, like a heart, heart or a lung or whatever, if, if I accept that, then that's not my reality. And I don't want that to be my reality because of, of being homeless because then Again, like she said earlier, the the connotations behind being homeless are a lot, are negative, and so I don't want to be seen like I'm lazy or I'm not out there trying to do something for myself. Sometimes it's just a situational thing, like my my mom and dad are, are down on their luck, and so we're homeless, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at a study the other day, and it says that like 40 percent of people who are homeless are family, and out of that, 18 percent are under the age of 18, and so it's. Sometimes it's not their choice that they're homeless, but again, it's that, that stigma that we have with being either mental health or homeless, it's negative. And so we have to, as each other, we're talking about it, making that discussion, we have to kind of break that, that stigma of being homeless. All right, so these, these are obviously things that you have in, in your careers yes. been working with for some time. Yes. Um, so uh, you've dealt with homeless in a lot of different situations. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things that really influenced me to do the day shelter as along with the resource center is I was talking to a particular gentleman who was homeless at the time. He was actually living over in Heritage Park and I asked him, hey, I'm getting ready to start this program. What do you think the community ne needs? And he said, somewhere to go and something to do. <clears throat> because if you're at the shelter, you have to leave at 8, you can't go back at 5, and even though you have some resources in the community that will feed them, let you do your laundry and shower, they don't provide any kind of extracurricular activities, no devotion groups, I mean, it's just they go hang out. So that is what influenced mm -hmm. the day shelter part of Hope's House. So I know that there are a, a few shelters mm -hmm. currently. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, you probably know more about them than I do. Um, they provide uh, a place to stay. To sleep, yes. But during the day... They're out to, the, to do what they want to do during the daytime. Correct. So at 8 o'clock in the morning, they wake everybody up and say, you have to leave, and then they open back up between 5 and 6 in the afternoon for them to sleep. So during the day, what do they do? And, and that's 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 the issue. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the issue. That's 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 the million dollar question: is yes. what's available for those people who are are homeless? What is so it? So that's is what that is what led you to Hope's it, house. Yes. yes, yes. And so what we want to do is we're going to have daily devotions. We'll have discussion groups. We'll have extracurricular activities, community service projects, just a bunch of things where they can come in. We'll have like an entertainment area with a television, but we don't want them to just come and sit around. So that's why we have all these other activities planned for them. All right. So is this do you have an actual physical location? Yes. We do. Yes. <laughs> we, do. we actually have a physical lo location, yes. It's going yes. to be on 5th Avenue, North 5th Avenue. We haven't moved in yet. Uh, we're waiting on maintenance to come in and start some of the repairs that need to be done before right. we can open. But All right. Now, I have, yeah. I have North 5th Avenue in my head now. Right across from Enterprise, yes. right there, down this, right across diagonally from Sumo's on top of the hill. It's going to yeah. be right there, right, literally right across from Enterprise. Right. 1110 North 5th Avenue. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Hope's house, and, and uh, Hope is um, what you're, plan to offer. It's the product you're offering. Yes, right. Yes. Uh, and it's going to include a day shelter and resource center. Yes. yes. All right. So uh, in a few seconds, we're, we're coming up on a break. Uh, when we come back, I want to find out more about the plans that you have for mm -hmm. this and, and how you think it will uh, benefit the homeless in our area and how you're going to 
fund it, etc. Okay. So uh, stay with us. We will be right back after this. Welcome back to Community Watch. I'm having a conversation with Michelle Gerald and Jonathan Brown, who are in the process of opening Hope's House Day Shelter and Resource Center for the area homeless. Uh, when, when do you anticipate being open, or do you know for sure? May. Now, we don't have an exact date, but hopefully if all the repairs can be made, we can get in, paint, decorate, uh -huh. Uh, get all of our supplies together and hopefully we'll be open by May. So uh, one day y'all were talking so you know what we need to do is open this kind of place because there's not one. All right. So is that as easy? As okay so let me tell you for me my initial plan was to start opening up boarding homes and I had actually found property got pre-approved and one day I just decided I don't want to do this and I couldn't figure out why and about a week later is when I had the conversation with my homeless gentleman who was on my caseload at the time who said the homeless need somewhere to go and something to do so I completely switched gears kind of gave it some thought and said well maybe we can do a day shelter and we also need some more resources so we can add a, a resource center called Jonathan and said what do you think he said I'm on board Okay. And the reason why is because, again, um, working at Floyd Medical Center at the, um, the behavioral health uh, part, you see a lot of repeat offenders. You see a lot of people who come in because, A, they are uh, on drugs, um, because they can't seem to find a place to go, um, or they're coming in because, again, they don't have anywhere else to go. Right. And so I think that Hope's House will be a benefit to the community because, again, it's, it's, it's changing the playground of some of these individuals, it's giving them something to occupy their time. Um, because you have a lot of people who wander the street, they get in trouble, mm -hmm. um, and they're in jail. Or you have individuals who say they want to you know, get help, but they don't have an address. Um, they don't have the, the means to go on the computer and apply for, for stuff. And so we're trying to bridge, be that bridge um, to help people out to, to better themselves. So. so in the Resource Center, we will have computers. Um, we know a lot of the people, they're not that experienced on the computer, so we will have people that will help them out one-on-one. -on -one. Because a lot of times people won't get on that computer and apply for things because it causes them anxiety. Uh, we'll also have cluster mailboxes. Listen, computers cause me anxiety. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I understand that yes, entirely. Yes. So we'll also have cluster mailboxes, so that will give them an address. Um, because I think that's, again, that's one of the main things is yes. you have to have a permanent address. And with that is some sense of belonging. You know, I can right. go in and check my mailbox every day to see if I have mail. Mm -hmm. um, and also, they can, again, they can apply for food stamps because mm -hmm. they have a permanent address. They can apply for Social Security because they have that permanent address. Because, you know, you, you have to have a permanent address to apply for any federal Anything. aid. You know, and if you're homeless, you don't have that address. Right. And so you're like, damn if you do, damn if you don't because you don't have... That, that, that piece of So there's puzzle. not an easy way for a homeless person to correct his or her situation. Exactly, yes. exactly. And we're not the cure-all, we're not trying to say right. that, but we're just trying to be that, that link to help them better themselves. You know, we're not trying to say that we have all the answers, we have all the programs, we have all the resources. We're not saying that. We're just saying that we're just trying to be a, a piece of the puzzle to help them solve their, some of their issues. And so victory for you would be helping someone out of homelessness. Is, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but it does sound like, I mean, it's, it, it sounds like something that is definitely needed for this particular population. It is. And I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, um, how are you? How are you doing this? Where Where is it coming from? I mean, are, uh, it, it sounds like a, a potentially expensive. Uh, yes. So funding, <laughs> right now it's coming out of pocket. Yeah. We have a budget that we have set aside, uh -huh. but we're also looking for funding within the community and we're uh, in the midst of applying for some grant funding. Okay. Um, but in the interim, it's gonna be just those monies we have aside and whatever donations people in the community will make for us. Um, well, we need, to, we need to talk about that because I, I'm just uh, paying out of pocket. Just doesn't have like a, a long term. It's not the long term answer. It's right. not. And of, course, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Yeah. But again, we're we're that that show, we're we're passionate and when we're set on this is what's needed. And so, in in, a, in the t meantime of trying to apply for grants and getting the community support. We are we're banking on the fact that we know that this is something that we are passionate about. This is something that we're called to do, mm -hmm. and so we're willing to, and on the on the beginning end, use our out of pocket expenses to to start it. But we know that hopefully the community will see, hey, this is needed, mm -hmm. and then they will buy into it because it is needed. You know, we we've all like I said, all have those preconceived notions of what homelessness is. And so we're trying to again tear down those 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 bridges and build new ones. Now it sounds to me, just based on what how you've described it, mm -hmm. that you could also benefit from volunteers. Yes. Oh yes. yes. From people who have particular skills. So, yes. And also um, maybe donated materials. Yes. Absolutely. Anything from pots and pans to furniture to, you know, if you're a nurse, we're going to be giving monthly screenings like blood pressure checks and stuff. If you want to donate an hour or two to come in and help us with that. Um, cooks, we're going to have breakfast and lunch. So if you want to come in and donate food, your time, whatever the community will, will help, we'll take it. So um, I know there, there are folks watching mm -hmm. this thinking, you know, I'm um, I would love to help out with this. Yes. What do they do? They contact us. How do they do? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, they can contact me. Um, my number is 706-204-4775. Um, and like, hey, just give me a call. Hey, say, I've seen you on the program. We want to donate. We want to help you guys out. Um, and we'll, be, we'll take anything you guys have to, have to offer. And then my number is 706-252-7169. Okay, and we'll, and we'll give uh, those numbers out again okay. before the end of the show in case you, you want to write those down. Yes. Um, do you have any, you have like a Facebook page yet? or mm -hmm. We're in the like process that? of trying to get that set up, but okay. not yet. But soon, I imagine. Yes. yes. Because we had to go through the whole process of making sure that the name was, was not taken and stuff like that. So we yeah. finally got approved for the name. And so we are, we're in the process of... of and you had to... Uh, find the physical location. Exactly, yes, yes. yes. Um, what kind of place were you looking for? What, what did you need? Just big open space or did you need? Uh... Yes, something that was going to, we didn't want necessarily a big open space. It had to have some division because mm. you have to have your, like there's one room that we're going to use for our, our multi-purpose room. One room we will have our daily devotion. We've got one for, um, Entertainment, like Entertainment. they can go in and watch TV, kind of lounge around, um, and then eventually we're going to have a room for we have some cots that's there. Mm -hmm. Individuals will come in that are really tired, they didn't get enough sleep that night before. They can go in and kind of rest, and we have to have some bathrooms so they can take showers right. and, and a room for like maybe some washers and dryers. So we wanted it to be a, like home, so right. so that the place that we got is an old daycare, um, and so it kind of that fosters that sense of, of of being belonging and having a home. They can call for themselves. And then in the multi-purpose room, because it was a daycare, it actually has two separate bathrooms. So you have one male and one female. Wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So uh, would you say that there are some, some common needs that the homeless have? Uh, or are, is each one individual? 
uh, and has has individual needs and problems that have to be addressed. I would say both. I th yeah, it would be yeah. both. I think one of the unilateral is first address, yeah. uh, having an address. Um, but again, some people may need money for a birth certificate. Some people may not. And so I think that we have to take each of them case by case. So. And and that's built largely on your experience working it is. With, it is. with them as, as, I don't know if client is the right word. Because you, you may have some who, who, who have a mental illness and then you may have some who, who are homeless because, you know, they've lost their job or you may have some who are homeless because they were on drugs. And so again, you don't, it's a, it's a gamut of reasons why an individual has right. got to the place where they are. And in trying to recover from whatever those situations were, uh -huh. Again, you need that support. So, more so in, a, in a case where someone has a, a say, a drug issue mm -hmm. or a mental health issue, um, will you be able to try and supply the additional help that they need to resolve those things? Yeah, as, as well as the monthly nursing assessment, we will have a monthly mental health assessment where um, a therapist or someone will come in sit down with this person, talk to them and see what they need or if they need any help. And then we can then out, outsource them to one of the community service boards that we have in the area. So it sounds like a lot of what you'll be doing is resolving whatever issues individual individuals have. Yes. Correct. Uh, connecting them with the help right. that they need. Yes. Not necessarily providing it all yourself. Right. But right but making the, the reference. Yeah. And there is something that I want to kind of, we are not um, a housing facility. We are a day shelter. We, that you got, they cannot come in and sleep there during the night. We are only there from between the hours of eight and five. We're that, 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 that space where they, when they leave the shelter, they can come hang out, get some tools that they need, and then they will leave um, at five o'clock. So I want to let, we are, we are not a housing facility. We will not allow people to sleep there at night. So we, that's just not what we are. We're a day shelter. Right. So I wanted to kind of get that out there because people ask, well, are y'all going to let people sleep there? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not, a, it's, it's not a housing. It's not a shelter. Yes. Well, um, it sounds like uh, a great idea, really needed. Yes. Um, I think uh, what you're taking on is, is a spectacular thing. Yes. So Thank what you. we need now is is a community to step in. Yes, right. please, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that we, we, we've all had those preconceived notions, and so we're here to break that down, and we, got, we want you guys to be a part of this and help us, you know, fight this thing called homelessness because it, 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 can, it can be one, but we need everybody's support, and this is just the beginning, so. All right, so uh, we're gonna take another break in just a few seconds. When we come back, We'll give you those contact numbers again so that you can help, and I know you want to. Yes. So stay with us. We'll be back with that contact information right after this. <coughs> Your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a Take Charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Welcome back to Community Watch. I've been having a conversation with Michelle Gerald and Jonathan Brown who are about to open Hope's House Day Shelter and Resource Center for the Homeless. And uh, they need you. Uh, they need your volunteer time. They need donated items. They need funding mm -hmm. to help make this, this essential service for the homeless to, to work. So uh, contact information, if you can give us those numbers one more time. Yeah, you can reach me at 706-204-4775. Um, and 706-252-7169. All right, thank you very much for being here. Thank you thank for having you. us. Thank yes. you all for being with us this week on Community Watch. We'll see you next time.